Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1215 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid-patch updates, is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. And one last thing before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Those guys are killing it. Our meta guides and videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction. But if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over for some professional help now. Starting our guide off in the top lane, we'll be moving Scion all the way up to the OP tier. This one's gonna be a bit wordy because a lot of people don't really understand what makes Scion so good. At face value, Scion's stats don't look all that great, he just seems a little above average. But if you dig a bit deeper, you can see that his stats are actually really weighed down by people trying to make Prowler's Claw work. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Sure, the gimmicky active to take a one for one may be funny when it works, but in reality, everyone knows about it and it very rarely does work. A lethality build definitely makes your ult and Q hit insanely hard. But remember, you're also incredibly squishy. You rarely get a chance to land a fully charged Q in fights and you're basically reduced to bush camping or praying your enemies don't have hands. When you build Scion the right way, as a massive beefy monster, you're nearly unkillable and still do a ton of damage. I mean, with you living so long, you definitely end up doing more damage than lethality would. It's just all up front so it doesn't seem as showy. Tank Scion is also way better for splitting, since you can buy items like Titanic Hydra, Hole Breaker, and Sterax and decimate towers when you get ignored. Don't even get me started about your incredible demolish proc. Yorick moves up to the S tier. Split pushing is always a good strat in solo queue at all levels of play, but it's especially good in the lower elos where teams are even less coordinated and no one really excels at this strat quite like Yorick. While Warwick isn't exactly new, you'd be surprised just how many people get baited by the very obvious strat of get low, then pop barrier. Even in high elo, you'll see a level 1 or 2 first blood going to a Warwick top. Obviously, even more people will fall for it down here, so hop on the train and abuse it. Urgot has been moving up in the world lately, so we're promoting him to the S tier. Honestly, we were surprised when Urgot didn't shoot up with the durability patch. Most juggernauts are doing better with it, but his sails just didn't really catch wind the same way. Either way, with the meta shifts that have followed since, he's finally back to being a pretty OP scaling pick. Shen gets moved up to the S tier. Something that I think really helps sell Shen as a pick is his flexible itemization. You can just build purely tank per usual, go for some more offensive items like Titanic or Wit's End, or just build to support your team by stacking ability haste and shield power. After spending a lot of time suffering in the top lane, Victor is finally back to being pretty viable in the role, so we're moving him up to the A tier. One of the main reasons for his comeback is that bruisers are just a lot weaker. Those guys heavily abuse the combo of Maw and Death Stands to just roll Victor at all stages of the game. But when dealing with tanks and juggernauts, even if you don't really kill them one on one, you can farm up safely and be a big carry in teamfights. We're demoting Darius down to the B tier. He's still a pretty strong pick in high elo, but in lower levels of play, he surprisingly just doesn't find much success. It's hard to really say exactly why that is, but my best guess is that the lower levels of wave management make it harder to both punish your opposing laner and stay safe from jungle ganks. Lastly, for this role, we're moving Trindamir down to the C tier. Again, this is another champion you wouldn't expect to do better in higher elo than lower, but you'd be wrong. For years, people consider Trinomir to be a champion that is only viable in lower ranks and a troll pick in Diamond Plus. But for the last couple of seasons, that script has been flipped. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We'll be moving Vi up to the S tier here. She's always been a nice, consistent carry in the jungle, but what really pushed her up now is her ability to take dragons on her own. Since the value of those went up on 1214, any jungler that can secure them is naturally going to be a better pick. 
Zach is being dropped down to the A tier. He's still a good pick if you just want a really strong engaged champion for teamfights later on, but his lack of early pressure has been costing him a bit. The other higher tier tank picks either come online faster or can force fights more consistently. Skarner moves up to the A tier. Like Zac, he's gonna be a strong, consistent champion, but compared to higher elos, just making single target picks isn't quite as valuable in the lower ranks. Teams just aren't as quick at making decisive calls and getting big advantages off of them, so generally, harder carries or champions with good AoE team fighting tend to do better. Wukong drops down to the B tier this patch. He's still doing pretty well in higher elo, but for some reason he just isn't working out in the lower ranks lately. While the nerf to Divine Sunder is pretty small, a nerf is a nerf, and it being his core item means he'll be just that much weaker this patch. Lilia is doing decently, so we're moving her up to the B tier, but she's still a pretty situational pick. In most games, you'd be better off with one of the higher tiered magic damage champions. The best games for her are those where the enemy team is pretty tanky and prone to kiting. Jarvan drops down to the C tier. In theory, Jarvan is a pretty strong champion. He has good early game gank potential with kills being possible as early as level 2, and his ultimate is a pretty strong tool for forcing team fights. But in practice, it just doesn't turn out that way. His clear speed is way too slow, and his 1v1 dueling is pretty awful, so he just gets owned by other junglers. Now, let's move on to our mid lane tier list. Kale gets demoted to the A tier. If just scaling up and being 1v9 later is your thing, she's still viable, but just know that her severe lack of early presence is a bit riskier than before due to the increased value of early objectives. Vagar also moves down to the A tier. Pretty much the same thing we just said about Kale. His weak early game does give proactive opponents more time to get early leads, but if you can make it to mid game intact, He's still a really strong carry. Even though they're in the same tier, I'd say Vagar is quite a bit better than Kale, since his baby cage is really strong even in early fights, so he has some utility to fall back on before he scales. Cho'Gath is moving up to the A tier. Mage Cho is not the most 1v9 carry in the game since you're usually just gonna be bursting down a single target rather than wiping an entire team, but it's an incredibly consistent pick. His passive gives a ridiculous amount of sustain, so you're guaranteed to slowly but surely win almost all your lanes. Yasuo is sadly in a pretty average spot right now, so we're moving him down to the B tier. He's not awful, but you really shouldn't pick him unless your team really needs an AD champion with super high DPS and you're very good at him. Talia has already been struggling in lower levels of play, and with more buffs coming at her due to her still being pretty strong in high elo, things are only gonna get worse for her. For now, we're moving her to the C tier, though she could go even lower the next time around. Karma drops down to the D tier. This is another one of those picks that sounds way better than it actually ends up being. In theory, she's an early game bully that can easily push out most laners and get priority. You support your jungler to get them an early lead and transition to being a support later. But in practice, it just doesn't work out that well. Karma's support skills don't scale nearly as hard as other enchanters, and you're just taking away a team slot that could have been filled with a hyper-scaling mage instead. Twisted Fate drops down to the D tier. There's always a pretty big correlation between ELO and TF's win rate. Even when he's one of the best champions in the game, it's usually in high ELO and he's always pretty average in the lower ranks. And with him being in the red, even in Masters Plus right now, he isn't even remotely pickable in Silver and Under. Corky has been on the struggle bus for several months now, with his only viable build reducing him to a spam or to poke type of champion. Riot just nerfed that pretty hard back on 12-13 and there's just no way to play or build him that makes him better than other scaling picks. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. Surprisingly, Nila is doing super well in low elo, so we're moving her up to the S tier. She's a really good pick for forcing kills, so if you like aggressive play, definitely give her a go. Vagar has become a bit weaker than before in the bot lane, but he's still definitely good enough to hang on in the S tier. He does better here than mid, since you can combo his spells with a support for some pretty deadly level 6 all-ins. Ziggs is surprisingly doing worse than before. We thought he would be one of the stronger picks since having priority for dragons is important and he's a great champion for that. 
but we were off by quite a bit. He's not terrible, but not good enough to contend with the champions in the two higher tiers, so we're putting him in the A tier for now. Senna is being moved down to the D tier, even as a support. Senna is a lot weaker than she was in the past, but if you're picking her as a bot lane carry and actually farming with her, you're just trolling. Finishing things off, we've got our supports. Heimerdinger is being added to the list as an OP tier pick. This is not a troll, not even a little bit. Really, just compare him to Zyra. He has pets that serve to give you extra zoning power in lane, super good DPS in all-in fights, he has really good poke, his ulted grenade is like a Sona ult with way more range for team fights, and you can always 20-minute Baron with your ultimate turret. Fiddlesticks moves up to the OP tier. This pick is another one that sounds troll, but once you actually see it in action, you'll understand why it's so OP. With W Max, you can easily face check both enemy laners in a minion wave and heal through their damage, all while you and your AD carry are melting the opposition. Post 6, his all-in potential is crazy, but if your laners are respecting it too much, you can also pack up and roam mid or even top lane to help get leads there. Brand is yet another mage support moving up to the OP tier. Like the last two picks, it's pretty obvious why he's so strong. He brings a lot of lane dominance, able to shove in and poke opponents from half a screen away. Plus, he brings a lot of skirmishing and team fighting power in case the enemy team tries to contest the dragon. Enchanter items got hit pretty hard last patch with a blanket nerf that took away about 20% of their healing and shielding power, but surprisingly, they're all in just about the same spot as they were before. Sona is still the best scaling option, but since her scaling is just a bit less consistent than before, we're moving her down to the S tier. Zerath is also getting dropped down to the S tier. He's still a really strong option for laning, but he's pretty much matched by the OP tier mage supports in that regard and is outshined by them in straight up team fights. And that about wraps things up for our 1215 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involved going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.